Nate's come out with another awesome tool for the swimming community. It's called Swim Nerd Live, and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart TV, phone, or other device. It has all the information you're looking for, event, heat, lane, name of swimmer, times and places. One click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time. Go to swimpractice.com to learn more. Okay, Mini Kesapoglu, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hello, great. How are you? Really I'm happy to be here. Excellent, excellent. Yes, I'm in, I'm in sunny Orlando, Florida. As you can see, where are you coming from? I'm right now in Vienna, and um, not super sunny today. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you're just you're just coming off a job, right? What have you been doing just recently? Oh, uh, last week I was photographing um, one of the most uh, legendary ski races ever. It's in Kitzbühel. Uh, people who know the ski world will know like it's it's like the Super Bowl of skiing it's a downhill competition that's like one of the most dangerous and daring in the world and um, it was always my dream to photograph this event and finally this year was was um, um, it happened and I'm happy like despite all the pandemic to be able to get such a cool job mm. like that yeah um, yeah that's fantastic and that's kind of a good intro into who you are really if, if people don't know who you are you're you're an olympian you're an olympic photographer no, no, no. you are no. olympic photographer well, yes you are yeah, okay <laughs> don't, okay don't, don't mislead people now um I no. thought, okay honestly i wanted more than anything to be an olympian okay um, in what sport uh, snowboard okay snowboard cross um so i actually did try from 2006 to 2010 um, I was trying to get enough points to somehow like miraculously qualify um, and it didn't work. But, but those four years as trying to do this impossible dream um, got me closer to athletes. Like now I know, like, because I couldn't give up things as much as they, I, I couldn't, like, I just wasn't good enough. I couldn't. So now like when I see any of them, they're like heroes to me already because they've qualified, I mean, they're more than qualified to work. The, the guys I work with are usually like some of the best in the world. So um, coming from, from sports and being an athlete myself and having those dreams and, um, it definitely gets me closer to them. I feel. Well, listen, uh, to be honest to me, an Olympian is someone that is just the best in their field. They're, they're the top of, of the best of the best. And the photos that you take obviously make an impact in the swimming world right now. You, uh, you've, You've been working with Energy Standard for the past yeah. um, couple of seasons, and some of the work that you're putting out is just incredible. Uh, I've Thank actually you. used a lot of it on my own podcast, and you've been very um, kind to, to share those photos uh, with me. But um, yeah. just tell me, in terms of that, how did that um, come about, working with Energy Standard? Yeah, I'll tell you the story because, um, you know, um, I've, I... I I'm not an Olympian, but I've been to nine Olympic games. So yeah. I've been to every Olympic game since Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. um, in Salt Lake, I'll do a very short like recap, but like I fell in love with the games. I didn't know what I had to do, but like I was like, I, I didn't know what it was about the games that drew me so much. Now I know. At the time, I didn't. But um, I, now I realize it was the passion of the athletes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this much passion coming together, mm -hmm. um, everybody's dream. Um, I, I really think Olympics is about the athletes and their passion and their the, them getting ready all those years mm -hmm. so that was the most magical part of part for me it, it seemed that I didn't know it at the time as I said I was like feeling this energy I was like what is this I need to figure this out so I made a promise to myself I'm like I'm gonna go to every Olympic Games as much as I can and do I want to do something with it so in Athens I, I, I was in Athens as a volunteer but I was taking photos of whatever I could find oh my god <laughs> you were great. there I was in Athens too yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> nice maybe we like crossed paths maybe you took a photo of me i hope so it's possible but I, I didn't have photo positions so it was really tough for me in athens but um i i still got like the i was still i wanted to just be around the air at that time like sure. it, of the olympics you know i just wanted to breathe it and just mm. wanted to be around it um and then torino games after torino i started getting photo positions and photo it's a long story how but i somehow kept my promise and i've been to every olympic since 2002 so the thing is during the Olympics, summer games, I come from winter sports. So normally like I do 
uh, my passion was always snowboard, alpine ski. Um, I like fast things on ice. Um, mm. I love the winter games because winter mm. games is like you put everything on ice and snow. There's nothing slow except curling. No. Everything is either like figure skating, like super intricate or like anything from speed skating to bobsled to downhill ski to to like all those things really excite me. Um, so I was a really a winter girl. But in the summer games, um, I have three things I love to shoot, uh, actually four. Uh, but athletics, uh, gymnastics, uh, beach volleyball, and swimming. Mm -hmm. um, and swimming was always uh, because athletics and swimming never like come come together. So um, I loved shooting Olympic swimming um, through since um, I think my proper swimming shoot started in 2010 Youth Olympic Games in 20 uh, in Singapore, mm -hmm. which is where I met Chad Leclo. In I mean I didn't meet him, but I, I um, started knowing of him sure. uh, because he won a gold, me a gold medal at the um, youth games. And um, I shot him again in 2012. I was at the London games and I shot uh, him beating Michael Phelps. So I really knew this character and I thought he was such a sweet boy. And he became like an Olympic superstar because he came, came, came from the youth games. And um, so anybody in the Olympic movement saw this South African really sweet guy who um, idolized Michael Phelps and then came and beat him and it was just this really sweet nice story um, and so I knew of him I knew a few Olympic stars um, and in Rio um, every evening I was just sitting at the swimming pool doing my other edits um, and I would just sit and watch and like just take random photos because it was my favorite like I love my job so like even if, if you leave me alone if I have free time I'm gonna go keep on shooting so I did that with swimming and it's funny because after now like shooting so much swimming going back I have photos of like all the energy standard guys without even knowing them I didn't even know of them like I was not like a in you know I didn't know any names or anything but it's really funny now I have like an archive but then what happened is um so I, I'm from Turkey, Istanbul, and okay. um, I uh, was hired by Sports Arena, Gloria Sports Arena, to do some uh, sh shoots of some tournaments that we have in Sports Arena. And there I met James, uh, who's the uh, coach of uh, Energy Standard. And um, I heard that Sarah and Chad, at the, at the moment it was Sarah and Chad, <clears throat> they, uh, they train in Gloria Sports Arena. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I wait four years to get like a few <laughs> seconds of these guys, because I'm so excited about one of the things I love shooting at the games is like right before, like right before they go in, because that's like all the four years has led up to that moment that they're about to now perform. And, and then it's this big, it's such an emotional high moment for them. So when I, when I saw them in Gloria, I was like, wow, it's like that the whole time. Like, it's like, they're actually doing this every day and I couldn't believe it. And like, so we did one like trial shoot and um, I, I, I was having so much fun shooting these guys because I know how big stars they are. Um, and um, the athletes, they, um, my first shoot with Chad is what made me a swimming photographer actually. Um, we clicked from the beginning. Like uh, he loves being photographed. I love photographing him. It, it's just like a match made in heaven with yeah. Gloria backdrop. Like we have the most beautiful sun. The architecture is mm -hmm. amazing. I have the best equipment right now. Like of, in sport, actually mm -hmm. a new one just came out, uh, but at the time um, <laughs> it was the best equipment. And um, it was just this scenario too good to be true. And um, so I shot some of his images and in the evening at dinner, like from my phone, I showed it to him. And he said, I've never seen a better photo of myself. And that like changed something inside of me. I was like, you're an Olympic champion. You're Chad Lecoe. How can you not have like me? Like I, I just started swimming photography. Of course, I've been a sports photographer, but never concentrated on swimming. And that sort of gave me the, I was like, okay, I can do this. I can do even better ones. I mean, let's, let's try more. And then I um, uh, started this project of documenting their journey to, to the games. Yeah. And I was thinking I'll do a book like together with Sports Arena, something like formalizing in my head about them two at the mo at the point it was like two years because it, this was 2018 yep so i'm like i'll photograph them on the way to tokyo but so many things happened on the way to tokyo <laughs> and it became um a really interesting um story because of that because isl started and um we won the isl championship and then another isl came and then covid came and then the Olympics got moved. So like, it's still going now, the project sort of, but as the project went, 
I just went into the world of swimming thanks to Energy Standard and a swim league. Wow. Uh, finally. So that was a long answer, but sort of, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's what I wanted because I, I wanted to get your background in terms of, you know, how this eventuated, because like I said, I see these photos come out. I, I see all the Chad LeClaire photos, incredible stuff. And, and like I told you off air a minute ago, you've been working recently with an athlete that I'm very familiar with Bruno Frattis and, and some of the images you've put out uh, with him. I worked with him for five years and, and I had really? my, my iPhone and uh, I couldn't capture anything close to what you captured. So, really? so you know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know how difficult it is. It is difficult. So uh, tell me in terms of your, your training or your education or how did, how did you start in it? And then how do you become good at it? Um, with me, like I, I knew photography was something that spoke to me the moment like I entered that dark room, like because I got educated and I went to school in Gettysburg College, Pennsylvania in the US. Oh, wow. Um, and um, actually, I was a studio art minor at the end. And that's because I just loved photography, kept on taking photography courses like and it, this was like 98 mm. uh, when I started. So it was before um, it was like right before the digital uh, kind of takeover. Okay. And, as soon as I graduated, I just started looking for photo jobs. It wasn't necessarily sports at the beginning at all. It was just photography. I want to be a photographer. What do I do? You know? And now looking back, I was like, I'm thinking like that was kind of a bold move, like graduating from college and telling like people I'm going to be a photographer and then like mm -hmm. trying everything. And I was, my first jobs were like in the, uh, like Boston area. Like I was taking uh, photos of like sports teams and school portraits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah. that was my first paid job. This was in around 99, 2000. Um, so I was finding these like assistant jobs and like mm -hmm. trying, still getting, taking courses at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, like still trying to like find my way. And then I found myself as a photo intern at the Salt Lake Organizing Committee oh. for the Olympic Games. Okay. So that's how it all like sort of, um, I was like, okay, photos. I've got to do something about photos. And then Olympics. Okay, something about the Olympics. And then actually I tried to go to the Olympics as an athlete. So I didn't quite get it in the beginning, <laughs> what my calling was, you know? Yeah. Um, so during that time that I was training snowboard, um, I was still working for magazines, but doing more portraits. Like I, I would work for like high-end magazines in Turkey, like Vogue, Elle, you know, those fashion magazines, but I would do the portraits. So I would do the portraits with athletes or or artists. Um, my idols were always like Annie Leibovitz, like Vanity Fair. Like I, I would devour Vanity Fair every week or an interview magazine. I like these uh, portraits that you find some reality in, in a person, some real, uh, I can take photos of models too, but like, I just want something real still. Like I, 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 I want a real emotion, a human emotion to, that, that's kind of my style. And um, because I come from magazine, like, so it's always like beauty, like my athlete shots, you will look at them I will try to choose ones that the athlete themselves would love. Oh, like their really? facial expressions must mm. be good. They must, I mean, of course I can't be perfect because mm -hmm. everybody like sometimes like they're, you know, it's, it's hard to, but um, at the end of the day, I won't put it, put it when their face is all, you know, coming out of the water. Like I, I want them to look like gods and goddesses and like, mm. you know, I want it to look like a magazine cover each one. And sure. uh, I want them to be like superheroes and good. like, yeah. So that's the, that. That comes from my magazine, I think, um, background. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought now. What, what? <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> what was it, it, it was really just how you got into it. And that's a, that's a good oh, yeah. progression in terms of that and, and the skill. Oh, yeah. tell, tell me this. Um, what what do you look for? Like you talked about emotion, but how can you how can you see emotion? How do you know when you've actually got a great photo? Um, honestly, um, those moments, like you don't even think like you're just kind of in the moment, like with the athlete. And so, so it's, it's like, like an athletic, it's like an athletic mindset, really. Uh, honestly, like, for example, um, I saw this backstage video of me shooting flow. Like it's on my Instagram channel. Maybe you've seen it. Like mm -hmm. it was in the ISL final in Vegas and he's just coming in and out of the pool, uh, like and pushing water. And I'm just like laughing and taking photos. And so like, and that photo became one of the one of the iconic ISL 2019 photos. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't remember me taking that photo, but I can see that we were both in the moment, super playful and like sort of open to new experience. You, you know, like mm -hmm. he can do something like, so that's the way I like to play with athletes because they all, 
athlete play like shoot I mean because they I like to shoot while they are playing because athletes I find um they're professional players like so um we just like kids we start playing as at a young age these guys don't stop and make it their profession and that playful side especially in the best ones always is there like Chad you'll find him playing poker then later or like they'll try to be like okay who's gonna uh hit the hit the flags you know like they'll, they'll be always playing and doing these playful things and when i can tap into that playfulness while i'm shooting then i get like the real real um sort of essence of of them i find like for example i shot sarah underwater like just playing around with with her her um her arms and she just looks like this angel and it just came from her like doing it you know so I find that they, these guys have these superhero, such nice playful moments. And I try to get it magazine quality, but in real life. So it's like a tough job to, um, to, to, to um, try to pick those moments. But I just have so much fun, like waiting for those moments, actually. I just sit there and try to hunt them, hunt those moments. And I guess if you have um, that type of intention uh, continually then you're going to get a type of photo because when i look at your photos honestly i can tell that's yours am I, am I like even if i haven't seen the tag or if you haven't posted really? yeah if chad posts it or if uh, sarah sostrom posts it or you know these go even when bruno posts i'm like oh yeah that's that's your photo okay it's very mm -hmm. obvious so it's like do you have a style that you're going for um you get out is this your Sorry, daughter? My, my daughter just walked in and got something. <laughs> um, they don't understand. Yeah. Um, what was the last part of your question? I'm so sorry. So in terms of style, like, well, how is it uh, that I can look at your photo and know it's yours? Um, yeah. I'm, I've been trained all this time, I think, to ha try to have the absolute perfect background. <laughs> so you usually won't find my photo, like, too many distractions, like, in the background, like, unless if it's, like, sort of, visually add to the photo. So I think that would be a big, um, and I, I, I usually frame things quite straight. I don't use too many, like I don't put, you know, I, I try to like- um, uh, Like face everything. on with just the athlete in frame. Is that what you're talking about? Usually, uh, yeah. of course it changes, but, I, I, but, but you, yeah, if you look through my stuff, like background is very important to me. Um, mm and cropping like correctly and uh, like in, in my view. And I think like that's one style. And like, um, I have some, some secret ways of making people look really muscular. Mm, oh, well, good. I need, I need to hire <laughs> you then. <laughs> I need to get you on the job. <laughs> and, but it's, just, it's just contrast and stuff. It's just playing with some shadows. Like I never will beef somebody up like with no, like, you know, it, it won't be, everything is real always, but I just have some like filters that I create on my own. Like, and I create it from scratch each time about how, because girls will be totally different than boys and stuff. So I have, I think that's one of the reasons why the muscle guys like my photos a lot. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that the boys, the boys would, would love looking bigger and stronger and, and fit. And yeah, then they have to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the, what about the women? And when you, when you're shooting, um, you know, a very athletic, powerful women, but you want them to be feminine. How do you in incorporate the two? Um, they already are feminine. I think like, I don't need to, the thing is with women, I still want to make them look strong. And that's maybe one of the reasons like why women don't love my photos as much. Maybe sometimes, I don't know. Um, but I mean, look at my photos of Sarah. Like there's, there's so many such nice feminine ones. And I don't yeah. think I make the, I don't think I make the females masculine. I try to bring out their feminine side, but I would never like, I don't know, sports photography, like females have been objectified enough. I will not objectify uh, females. Um, that's just not my, I will not make them look like objects. Um, no, well, no. Much more than males, I would be careful with the females about that somehow. Yeah, that's sure. just my, my angle because I think um, there haven't been enough female sports photographers. So, so maybe I look at it a little bit differently. Like to, to I don't know. Um, when you're at an Olympic games, tell me this obviously everybody's looking for the winning shot is that is that the mindset that you're looking for when you're at the olympics i just want that winning shot of you know any any famous photo of you know usain bolt crossing the line or is is that the mindset for you or are you looking mm. for something more at the olympics depends on my assignment um but usually no uh, because the winning shot is like so overdone 
I really like the um, something, uh, some other story. Like, sure. um, I mean, of course, I would want that to if that was happening in front of me. Like, you would not like find find me not shooting it, you know, yeah, um, yeah. because it's so powerful. Like, I mean, when Usain Bolt runs through a stadium, um, it's just amazing. I mean, a guy who, you know nobody is like for that country like from that country but how a guy can like make a whole stadium cheer for him like that yeah. like he has yeah. a different energy it was such a such an amazing experience listening to the crowd in beijing while he broke the world record like i will never forget those sounds it's amazing what those guys can do anyway you just took me took me to an amazing place when you say like um well i mean when usain bolt is breaking the world record for 100 meter I mean, that means so much for humanity, because just like our swimmers, like when they break world records, when someone takes the human level and ups it, levels up, that's amazing for everybody. Like, so you feel that energy. And I, I, this is what I feel with our swimmers, too. Like, they are really leveling up the human race for all of us. Like, they represent us, mm -hmm. um, everyone, everyone's potential. And you can use this as inspiration for so many things, what they do. Um, and that's why for me, they're such special people because um, they work on this one thing. They're trying to make it the best to be the best humans in that in the world. And whatever you take and try to be the best in the world at it, like I think it's so amazing and so, so inspirational. And um, uh, so what I look for is definitely emotion and some stories. Um, but those kind of iconic moments also like I, I always say action and emotion. Mm. and one thing though like um emotions much more important especially now like soon drones might replace the action photographers like who don't interact at all with the subject and just try to look to be for the best angle very soon like you're going to be able to take out the photos from the tv screen like and you're not going to need like uh, photographers but the emotional part the connection part um those portraits that i do like I don't know if Chad will look like that to a drone, you know, like, no. um, I don't know, like if he will smile as night, maybe, maybe one day they'll make drones of like us. I don't know. I can feel emotions. No, I don't think so. We need those humans. Uh, and that, that's, I guess, in terms of recognizing the emotion and tapping into it, are you an emotional person? Do you yes, feel I, a lot of emotion? Oh yeah. Um, I actually, I do. I am an emotional person. I think that's one of the reasons why I do this job and try to also find other emotion and try to capture emotion, feel it, and then share it and hope other people feel it. So that's sort of like what I try. What are the most powerful emotions? Obviously, obviously joy, I guess, uh, at the Olympic Games. What are some of the other emotions that you're looking for to tap into? Um, what are, what I want people to react, how I want people to react when they look at my photo is I want their heart to skip a beat. <laughs> wow. When, when, but this is the ultimate goal. I don't know if it has happened yet. Like I want people to like, look at it and be like, oh, like, you know, like take a deep breath, like gasp. Yeah. 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 I want to shock people about like how amazing these people, like, but always in a positive way, mm -hmm. uh, always in an inspirational and positive and I think that's one of the reasons also athletes start trusting me, like try to be po like a positive documentary. I will not show you when they fall because I, I don't like, um, I, I'm, I'm for the athletes. I, I would only show things that would be good. For, I, mean, I mean, sometimes they will take a photo from me and will share something I wouldn't even share. Like, but yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. For me, it's always positive. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's an interesting take because, um, you know, I find some of my best moments as an athlete have been when I have fallen. I'm, I've learned the most from those moments. And sometimes I almost feel like I, I had captured those moments so I can tap into that emotion again to maybe not want to go back to that state, not feel that state. So it's like, for me, when I always <clears throat> see something positive, I mean, you it's it's a lot hard it's a lot easier for me to tap into the failure than it is the really? success yeah for like in terms of emotional when i when i think about times that i've grown the most it's during that pain it's like oh i do not want to feel that again you know so is that ever um yeah crossed your I mind in terms of capturing that um i would take some photo like let's say like when somebody's having a really hard set and they're really tired I don't consider that negative like that 
like yeah right so tired they can't even look up like those are emotions i want i want emotions like i want them super tired and can't like you, you know like those kind of emotions i want um just want them to look good while they're doing that that's all. yeah, um, yeah. That <laughs> if sense. they can fail looking good then maybe i'll uh, put it on yeah. but um honestly uh, i want to especially the ones i pick you know like um i pick a few athletes on in my mind sometimes uh, and then just start well actually it's a give and take if they share enough of my stuff and if they like my photos they'll get more photos just like bruno like that's how we got in he, he wanted his he, he um he shares it he loves it he gets it you know just like flo or sarah or chad like so who, um, especially the top guys, whoever like gets, um, and um, so what was I saying now? I lost my train of thought again. Um, <laughs> no, I like it. You are, you are an artist. I like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just get into my mind. I'm like, um, because. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> now listen, um, is there competition um, amongst your fraternity? I mean, when I, when I go to the Olympic games, I see a sea of photographers. I mean, it must be pretty competitive. Oh yeah, photographers are very competitive. Um, In a bad way, like a mean way. Um, there is that a little bit, like for sure. Like, um, you, we all want jobs. We all want to keep our jobs, you know. Like, so for sure, there's a good amount of healthy competition uh, there. Like, because if there wasn't, um, like I, I mean, honestly. I try to compete like an athlete. I compete with myself. I'm not competing with anybody else. I don't check out anybody else's photos. Um, I, mm. but I, I am constant comp with constant competition with myself, try to make a better photo. Um, I try to have nobody affect me except, I mean, I've looked at many, many sports photographers um, in the past, but like w while I'm in an event, I'll just be doing my thing. I won't check, but like on my free time, I'm always looking at photos, you know, always looking at, always trying to push the limit, always trying to find a different angle um and of course um my best images i haven't shot them yet because it hasn't happened because I, i'm still going there just like an athlete it's right. like you know right. i need to break my own records um people say i'm doing really good I'm, I, it's going to be much better you know i'm always in like and I, I i try to get the inspiration from them with my photography as well like i'm like i'm, I'm like you guys i'm I, I qualified for the olympics because i was going to go to tokyo you know, I also qualified, like I actually qualified while I was with the athletes, like not qualified, but I got my job that I'm going to the Olympics. So I was like, I'm going to, so I like kind of still pretend like I'm an athlete, like qualified. <laughs> <laughs> now in competition in, in, you know, you're, you're shooting Sarah Sostrom or, or Flo Manadu, you know, they, they have people that push them. They have people that they admire. They have uh, people they respect. Is there s some other photographers in the, in the swimming game that you, that you admire or respect? um i of course um uh, we worked we had the pleasure to work together with mike uh for the isl mike. yeah and i love mike and he's um definitely uh an amazing photographer who devoted his whole life for swimming photography so it's amazing yeah. to have uh, worked with him so fast and um i mean i've worked with um uh, I don't know if you know, they're not swimming photographers, but John Hewitt, who's one of the biggest um, sports photographer advertising, uh, like commercial and sports in the US and David Burnett, who's a okay. huge, uh, it's, um, I mean, he is a photo legend and he's a friend of mine. I'm lucky to call him my friend. And um, I've been working with these guys for so long. They actually have been following my swimming journey and really enjoying it because they know me for years like before I was into swimming. I mean swimming has only started for me two years ago and it became it opened a whole new world for me um and they've been sort of like following and cheering me on um oh now I realize what I was gonna say cheering me on because uh, um I you remember when I lost my train of thought before yeah I was gonna say I'm a cheerleader of the athletes okay like right. that's what I was like all for, with all these guys who um um who give back the photo love to me, you know, from the way they share my photos and everything, they will get back like more photos with like, um, you know, I'll even like when they're, when, when, when they feel down or something, I'll send some extra photo. Like, you know, I, I try to like really sure. be their cheerleader, like yeah. be on their side on it. I just wanted to. Yeah. I have, have a very, I have a very similar mindset as a coach, you know, I, I, I consider myself like a concierge at a, at a hotel. I'm there to help yeah. you carry your bags to your room. You know, like you're, you're the person, but I'm just the bag carrier. Like I, I'm there yeah. as an assistant. I'm there as, like you said, as a cheerleader, I'm there as a supporter. I'm there as yeah. a guide. 
Um, so I feel very similar in that sense. And I think that's how you form the best rela- relationships with your athletes when, when they feel like they have a partner, a cheerleader, someone, a supporter, yeah. someone that's, you know, going to be there and, and, and honestly can be honest with them at times, you know, and, and I'm sure your, your, um, photographs speak honesty to them too of like yeah. they might see something in there like oh i've i gotta be i gotta be better there or whatever it is you know so yeah. uh i'm sure they really appreciate that no no doubt i know they do like and it's it's such it's been such a special i don't know if swimmers are just like nice athletes in general i think they are like i, fi- I find that they are yeah i find um, they're too nice sometimes we're gonna get some maybe maybe they're too <laughs> nice sometimes it's true yeah. I, but it's it's great how how they've um how they've um yeah it's it's great the relationship i've formed with many of them and some so some of them i feel like i'm really their older sister because they open up to me they, they will say things to me and um i i won't ever share you know and they know that they can trust that that trust relationship is really nice uh, yeah. when you can build that and then and then they they give these amazing photos because of that relationship that we've built you know and um yeah i'm so happy such a so lucky to uh, be in this world actually um yeah my mom was a swimmer my mom was a turkish butterfly champion so like i have it a little bit inside of me too like um from the family so really happy and do you have a brand that you work with particularly is there is there a type of um, camera that you really like to shoot oh um yes uh sony um i use purely sony okay i'm actually an ambassador for sony but not because uh, i i mean i love it and that's why, like, I yeah. love shooting with the, the Sony. And I was in the ISL and I was, um, you know, there's so many legends in the ISL, like from the coaches and like, you know, the staff. And they've been looking at swimming photos for years. And I've, I've gotten the feedback a few times saying, we've never seen swimming photos like yours. And yeah. I know the reason. It's because, of course, I'm very invested and passionate and I won't stop until I get many, many good images. Like, it's just, I'm a machine when it comes to like, you, you put me in that pool, like you're not gonna get me out of there with like 300 good photos. Like, I'm just gonna run around like crazy and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have that passion, that's number one reason. But number two is because my, um, the equipments now, like the equipment I have now, Sony, it focuses so amazingly. The autofocus is insane. Um, and it's 20 frames per second, the one I shoot with. Um, actually, they just came out with a new one that's 30 frames per second at 50 megabytes. Mm-hmm. So it's insane. I can't wait. It's called the Alpha One. It was out like yesterday. I am oh. so excited to get my hands on this Alpha One, even though I just bought underwater gear for my Alpha 9 Mark II. I hope it works for Alpha <laughs> 9. Anyway, um, doesn't matter. We'll have to sell that and upgrade. Um, but imagine 30 frames per second at 50 megabytes. So it's going to be even like we can, you know, those Chad photos of like, usually they're like very, very little cropped, if any, yep. uh, we can, we can dress buildings, you know, with that, you know, it yeah. is, it's just the quality has gone now insane. And, and yeah, like this kind of focus didn't exist. Um, I don't want to get too technical now. I'm sure people are not, if they want, I'll, I'll explain to them like, um, but it, it, it's really a combination of, somebody who's really willing to put in the time, of course, and the passion and the work. And also this, this, and I get to work with the best swimmers. Also Chad, for example, especially Chad, he loves being photographed. He says, um, he, he says, uh, when I'm there photographing, he swims better. Yeah. Um, he will come out of a race even, I mean, let alone training, training. He's always like, even if he's like four lanes away, he's like, he'll be like, you know, waving as he comes out. Like <laughs> he wants the camera on him. So of course I have to graduate, you know, go, go towards him and like take his photos. And even like every time uh, he has like a, you know, uh, well, I don't usually shoot him head on uh, at the 50, but like a hundred or a 200, I'll be like uh, on the other side and getting the head ons because I- I'm sorry, other swimmers, but like Chad Leclo is, I think the, the most, he just is so photogenic with the fly. It's just, mm. I-, I have never come across a more photogenic flyer. Like, bring well, it up you i know? have one i have one now in my stable his name is cody simpson and i think you're eventually going to take a few photos of him i hope uh, well invite me over there let me just uh check it out <laughs> oh i would love i would love for you to come out yeah absolutely I was, gonna say, I was gonna say that though in terms of the travel you have two kids as well it must be difficult to balance being a mother and also you have two right yes i do okay, yeah. yeah okay so uh but but it's difficult with all the traveling right um, it does, especially with COVID now, like the bubble times, like have been like, before it was now, 
how easy was it to travel before? Like it was so mm. cheap. There were so many flights and like um, Vienna is very central, very close to everywhere. So it was like two hours I could be home like at a, for a 60 euro flight and be home for two days and then go off to the next thing. Now the problem is like you can't have these like middle, like you, you, you still get jobs, but they're kind of like in big blocks and you can't really see anybody in between. Mm. Yeah. So that's really tough. It is tough. Uh, I have to admit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But at yeah. this point, I'm like happy to just get jobs. Um, yeah. Before it was still tough, but at least I ha always had this like, you know, if, if a job was more than a week, I would definitely fly home for the weekend. But now you can't even think of those things. Tell me this. How do you get an accreditation for uh, the Olympics? Um, I can't really reveal all my powers uh, okay, to okay, you. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a secret. I like that. Um, but, it, but I imagine it's a, a very select group of people, right? Yeah, I mean, I've been working for the Olympics now, like for for um, about ten years. So, but e even f for me and our group that we work together, um, so uh, it, how can I say? Each time, I'm still so happy that I'm going. Nothing's for sure. Each time, I really work on it and find like I I have a few ways that I can go, um, but it's yeah, I don't, I can't really talk so too much about it, but like. What, how you go is you pretty much press photographers can go and like press. So you have to kind of apply to your national Olympic committee. Okay. right. So one good way that I used to find out, used, used to go with was um, um, in Turkey, in Turkey, nobody's interested in winter sports. So we would get accreditation. Um, like, the, so the, I'll just tell you how I started. Um, there, there were absolutely no journalists covering the winter games. So mm -hmm. I applied saying like, I'll go, like I'll pay for my own stuff and I'll send you guys whatever. So like I made it something like that. And then, right. yeah. So, so you always have to, it's a lot of communication, a lot of yeah. like, a lot of, uh, yeah. Um, it's not easy. And each time it's, it's like, am I going? And will I find a photo position? Will I, and um, since I had this, um, this crazy bet with myself, I was like, even if I don't get a photo position, I will just go stand by the, you know, and I'll take photos of like, so I had that kind of yeah. attitude. So you have to kind of have that kind of an attitude mm -hmm. to want to be a photographer at the games. You just have yeah. to find every open door that is available. Exactly. You got to grind and, and work. And now in terms of, <laughs> uh, in terms of Tokyo, do you have your accreditation set for that yet? Um, uh, it not set yet, but probably most probably it will be. Okay. Good. Well, what's your feeling on that? You think this is going to happen? I mean, as a, as a photographer, someone, I mean, I'm sure there's income that's dependent on this and obviously not to mention yeah. the photos. There's a lot of anxiety for you too, like hoping yeah. this will happen. So yeah. um, is your gut feeling that it will happen? For sure. Right now? Yes. I really feel it will because I've seen uh, since, since the pandemic, I've done a basketball tournament, uh, a whole swimming league, um, and now like a, a skiing championship, I can see things are happening and like bubbles are working. And um, as long as you get everybody tested, like every two, three days and create like some rules or whatever, like the people, it's, it, it must work. They, they had a whole year now to update this. Um, and I think they're going to do everything they can. I really hope so. That's what I want to put like that kind of energy out there um, because I, I know how much the athletes are working on for this too and really want it to happen. Uh, for everybody I feel like if it doesn't happen it's it's a big big change in the sports world yeah. um, I don't know if Olympics will ever be as as um, um, how can I say as important for the young generation if they skip one they're skipping a whole generation of people who are going to be following these people like you know it's it's just a lot to give up for them I find it is. I don't know yeah. Yeah. What's a, what's a, a goal for you for the future? Uh, do you want to put a, a, a book out or is there, yeah. is there a, a something going on in your life? Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, actually, I, I um, went through all my swimming photos I've done of, of energy standard, like my, my, my golden project. I love it. I love it. How, how, how deep we went. It was really nice. And um, I'm, it's right now in the, in the process of, being um so I'm, I'm doing like an art book like a photo okay. art book about sort of the champion mindset um and using like the energy standard uh athletes as like um sort of sort of it's like an inspirational photo book that you can just like look and it will look beautiful but the more you read it it also gives you like um uh views on how to be the best at something 
Mm. Um, and this is just like my interpretation. So like, actually it would be interesting to show you and see what you think as a coach yeah. and an athlete and like, um, could be, could be nice. I could, I could send you like a little preview. Oh, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to buy the book. Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a supporter. So look, uh, I, I don't need anything for free. I'd love to buy it. So, and then I'd also like to promote it. So help, let me, let me know when it's out and, and we'll get it out there. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I'm so excited about it. I still haven't decided fully on the name, so I can't say, but like it's, it's, yeah. it's, shaping up like very very soon and it's it's kind of my like my um my quarantine project awesome i love it what's the what's the very next project for you where are you going next oh i wish i knew i got like a job offer today from turkey but i have to give a budget so you don't know like um yeah. so i might go back for a, for a for a special swimsuit shoot in turkey mm -hmm. um but at this point olympics i don't know i really don't know i, I wanted to go to nice um and marseille for for this golden cup of all oh, right yeah that's right yeah um to photograph uh, uh um florent uh and bruno bruno's gonna be there uh, -huh. uh maybe so i was thinking but i don't know i think it's not even allowed um you can't really have media there so um wow i want it so right now i just came back from the scheme thing and like this is the life of a freelancer i'm trying to figure out my next step right now oh i got a yeah, I have a few magazine shoots here in Austria. Like, I'm not even counting those because they're here. Um, yeah, for like uh, visual media and stuff. So I have like some small jobs here, but nothing like really big until the Olympics at the moment. But you never know. Every day it might change. So, I mean, it seems glamorous, but it's not an easy lifestyle then. Oh, no, it's not. It's no. um, Don't believe my stories. Don't believe my Instagram. I always put like the best of the best there. Uh, making it seem so cool yeah. you know if you really want to know what's going on you got to talk to me you can't like just look at my commercial you know that's my <laughs> commercial over there even though it's all real what's yeah. there um yeah. it's yeah it's of course pick you know being picked and chosen of the best of the best um yeah. trying to give the best feeling that's uh, sort of like my photographs like i try to give the best but yeah of course there are days that i just like sit around and edit and don't do anything so interesting um for sure uh, and just one last thing, I was, I'm fascinated with this. Obviously, you know, it's progressed from where it used to be film and then you have to used to go home and, and uh, you know, uh, what did you do with film back in the day? You sit in a dark room and then uh, process it, right? Is that what they yeah. call it? So, uh, but yeah. now, now it's all digital. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure there must have been times uh, throughout the last 10 years where you you just couldn't wait to see how it like, is there a snap that you're talking like you're just so eager to see it? Oh, yeah. I think that's one of the best parts of like um, shooting film too, like that surprise, like that, that whole thing of that you have to wait, you know, um, yeah. it made it so it made it so much different than what, how we used to work. It's for sure. Um, so you yeah, can get that moment now wait. almost you instantly, know. can you? Sorry? You can almost get that moment instantly now, can you? Where you, uh, where you just uh, no, go straight to it. Not even, I see it. Uh, like now that my new camera, like the Sony, because mm -hmm. it's mirrorless, I actually see what I shoot. So I look at a screen. So I know exactly what I shot as I shoot. So it's, it's now absolutely instant. And it used to be that we would go for a job, do the whole shoot, and we had no idea if we had anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> the film was loaded wrong or like something. So you don't really have like a like proof at all. Like now it seems so scary, like how people did that, but we all did, because that's the only way. Um, but yeah, uh, now it's absolutely instant. It's definitely a different way of, it, it, I'm lucky that I caught the end of the film era just to have just to have seen such a big switch in in technology like that like and how how people reacted how people changed it made me much more open for the future um and and seeing nothing is for for nothing's staying everything changes you know the only thing yeah. that stays is photographs <laughs> well that's it yeah you're capturing you're capturing <laughs> a piece of history so in terms of give me your three best tips for the amateur photographer like myself somebody that just takes a photo yeah. and like what the hell was that but give me give me some tips speed um with sports photos never shoot never ever ever shoot uh faster than a thousandth of a second um so you want to get you want to freeze action you go a thousandth or more like when I shoot like I try to even be like three four five thousand because I really like this super sharp but like if you don't have the correct lens at least at least try a thousand so you can like bump, bump up the ISO a little bit but make sure you 
capture the the action um but that's what i like some people like uh, of course you know some uh, softness to show the speed or something like that. that that's a different thing but if you want to freeze the action a thousand second thing uh really important for swimming as i said before check your background um doesn't matter how good the action is in front if you have something ugly in the back that's an ugly photo yeah. um doesn't you don't know how many photos i put in the trash because the background's not working just because the front is good doesn't make it a good photo mm. um it's a complete thing and you don't you won't even feel it when you look at it but when you when you do like your insides will feel the photo is better okay. you know yeah. maybe that's one of the reasons why you know it's my photo because usually you won't have something distracting in the background yes definitely yep um that's one of the things that i it, it, and the third thing um for action photography those two things for sure for editing and the third thing would be connect to the people you know smile at them and see, see like bounce things back with them um if they're giving you something give something back you know mm, like uh, right. and i think that that kind of comes out then even if they make one joking look at you in the pool that makes the photo because um they're they're comfortable with don't like tell them to oh do that again do this again like stay a little bit more low key like make them feel comfortable um don't like you know just just know know how, how to act around them like um you'll see a lot of like um photographers coming and like sort of jumping on like a big star like trying yeah. to be like do this do that stretch your arm blah, blah, blah. and they don't like that they don't like being told what to do like they will come and play with you if you're like you know patient enough and and nice enough like i i mean that's what i do like so awesome. so just read read people like read people yeah i love it uh yeah I, I love the advice and it's helpful i'm gonna i'm gonna utilize it um really let me know like um uh, which one you utilized on <laughs> i'm gonna uh, well like i do said it with bruno. Do a bruno. Bruno. Yeah, i'll do it i'll do something with bruno <laughs> i'll send it yeah. to you uh listen it's been awesome uh love love your story and and thank incredible. you for i'm just so happy that you like i'm not a swimmer i actually have just been in this world for only two years and it's just such an honor to be called to your podcast because you know you know you have all these champions and mm -hmm. huge stars and i'm like oh my god like the swimming <laughs> world really has embraced me so i'm really thankful thank you absolutely you're doing fantastic work keep it up and hopefully we get to meet soon okay i that would be great all right take care thank you brett bye Mine. bye